The first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm is that she keeps me up to date on today's youth. It's thanks to Mrs. Philholm that I know about things like TikTok, ghosting, and eating Tide Pods. Remember when kids were eating Tide Pods? I miss those simpler times. But anyway, Mrs. Philholm is always current with the latest happenings, and as a not-so-reformed teacher, she's eager to share the information with anyone who cares to learn it. The next thing you should know is that last week Mrs. Philholm taught me about waffle stomping. Here's what I learned. Waffle stomping is a gerund, which is to say that it's a verb functioning as a noun. The root verb is waffle stomp, and the infinitive form would be to waffle stomp. When you diagram waffle stomp, it's important to remember that it's both words together, waffle and stomp, that make up the verb. Waffle is not an adverb or any kind of modifier describing stomp, but rather waffle is part of a compound verb, a verb with more than one word. And that verb, the whole verb, is waffle stomp. The first thing you should know about my friend Andrew is that last week he left the dollhouse during a terrible snowstorm. Imagine my surprise when I looked out my kitchen window to see Delaney scraping the windows of the car while Andrew sat comfortably inside, belly full of Chipotle, warming up the engine. The next thing you should know about Andrew is that when I freaked out about it, he may have been reminded of the me he first met. Back when I taught high school and regularly threw doors open yelling, unacceptable. But this is me 10 years later and Andrew 10 years later, and now there's this Delaney, who turned calmly to me, scraper in hand, and said, he deserves to be spoiled sometimes. Give me a break. Welcome to Half My Age, a weekly show in which a 25-year-old adult and a 50-year-old child help each other make sense of the world. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I know. <laughs> do, do you want to know my side of that sure. story or not? Yeah, I don't care. I'm. I know you offered. I sure did, and she uh, she took the scraper. She she uh, stole it right out from underneath me. Yeah, she said that. Yeah, but but anyway, she, uh, the moral of the story is she's wonderful. And today she's, she's wonderful. She's here on the show. She just doesn't know it. Oh, she is. She sure is. Kind of. I mean, I'm I'm in the closet as per usual, but oh, under right. our um our our lockdown orders, our double secret probation, uh, we're no longer allowed to leave the house. So she's just across the uh, the fake wall. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Huh. Can she hear you? She sure can. How annoying. <laughs> I have to watch my mouth. I mean, I can hear you, but. I'm delighted. She, she right now she she can hear me, but not you. So she she she'll have to infer or guess what's going on on your side of the conversation that that would cause me to talk about things like waffle stomping. Sure, that was good, Andrew. Really great job with the uh, yeah with the grammar approach to that. <laughs> what else would you teach me? You're an English teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That was. Okay, I'm sorry about my shushy jacket. I'm going to try to, I hope that's the last time it shushes. Uh, yeah, waffle stomping. That's I'm, funny. I'm guessing the atelier is cold today because I didn't give you a whole lot of notice about recording. Oh, no, it's not that bad. I was planning on recording. I just went out for my walk today. I wanted to have that under my belt before we started. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. It's it's really not bad. Actually, yesterday was a nice warm day. Today's beautiful. I, I couldn't decipher from the um, the alerts on our phones whether or not we're allowed to go out and walk. It, it says you can you can go out and get groceries and you can walk your dog. Uh, but, I, I, you know, am I going to get in trouble if I go out without a dog? Oh, uh, interesting. I saw people out today. My understanding is you can go out and walk. You just can't be close to anybody and you can't, like, play sports or be, you know, Close. Sure, so contact. I think you can still go out and walk. Uh huh. I hope so. I do. I hope I didn't break the law. Um. I don't know, man. It I've had a very, hard time. I, I can just, uh, you know, the 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 cops are hassling you. It's the perfect opportunity to say, "Hey, I'm walking here." <laughs> right. I did break the rules, and last night I had two comic friends come over, and we kept six feet distance from each other, and they just figured. Well, they said, 
grosser things than this. But one of the things that we decided is that they could say they're coming to the help of an elderly friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, I don't know. I've had a hard time focusing, Andrew. I've been I've been really struggling with motivation. Have you? Yes. I feel better today. It actually helped me to see these two buddies of mine last night. And it wasn't the most outrageous fun. And to tell you the truth, it felt kind of naughty. You know, I mean, we're like, don't post it on social media. We're not supposed to be doing this. Um, and, and it, but um, it sure helped to laugh. Uh, I have just been so, uh, um, yeah, I think it's the fear instinct in me. Listen, we were talking about me fearing sitting still in the before times when all I was worried about was, you know, getting a job and telling my jokes at night back in the before times when you could gather in places and tell jokes. I have been spending a lot of time. I realized that like um, doing physical things, digging, moving rock in my yard, putting the finishing touches on my French drain, going for walks. I've been writing a lot of sidewalk chalk messages on the, you know, park. Yeah, I saw those. Sidewalks. You know, it's how I do. Uh, that, when, but that's also kind of those? a physical thing on my walks. Are those are your walks morning. early in the in the morning or are, or are you writing are you scribbling on the sidewalks as people are walking over you? There's some people around. Today I did it and there there was one couple that like from afar just yelled and waved and said, you know, love it and that's generally it. People sort of mostly people ignore it. They don't care that I'm doing that. Maybe they're annoyed by it. Um so, but it's also kind of a physical thing because you kind of bend down. Like I really get sweaty, to tell you the truth, when I'm when I'm doing I something. It. That, I, I was looking at your Instagram, <laughs> and it seems like you put together, you know, hundreds of yards of writing. I know. You should see what I did today. It was really good. I wrote the word love over and over and over and over again. I didn't even count, but I do have a video of it. Walking it at a pretty fast pace. It was around this structure. Took over a minute. Wow. So I wrote the word love a lot of times. Um, yeah, so that's how I've been doing it. And this is not, the truth is I am so afraid that it's hard to shake. I have so much actual anxiety that it's hard to shake. And that, I'm realizing this, like it is crippling and I, I got to get out of it and I can and I will. And getting up early today and going for a walk instead of, oh, I'll go for my walk. You know, I've been doing it, but I've been just in slow motion because what's the point, you know? But in general, that's all I've been able to do. Shoveling in my backyard, like I said, it feels also, thank God, for mostly nice days. I mean, aside from that snowstorm last week, which was awful. Yeah. How, how was your backyard yesterday? It was just beautiful. and But it's like my yard work is not actually top of my priority list right now. But it's kind of the only thing I can do without. I don't know, man. Uh, it has been not good. What, what's the uh, What's the top of your priority list right now? Getting a job, making money. Now I, I'm I'm a, like I said, all of my even small streams of income went away. So, mm -hmm. and as we have discussed, the best way I think for me to go about this right now is probably to sit back here in the atelier in the recording studio, and just grind on voice auditions. I am getting some jobs. They're here and there. But, you know, it's income and I don't have to touch a germ. I don't have to go out and sure. talk to a person. You get to stay in your your nice recording studio that you built yourself. Yep. And there are some jobs that I can still apply for online that are coming up. So I should do it. I also have half a mind that I should go just work at Costco, which I have lots of friends doing. And then I get into that paralyzed thing. And the fear of losing everything, not making enough money, go... I understand kind of how fear works and how that doesn't help the creative space in my brain. As we discussed last week, there are also clearly ways for me to be thinking about monetizing or at very least outreach for my mama bear stuff, even my joke telling, you know, I mean, what I do is bring joy to people. There are ways to do that online. There are lots of people being very productive online. Not I. I have been really close to paralyzed for me. I mean, somebody said that last week, like, okay, well, you at this level of productivity is still, you know, I'm like, yeah, 
I don't like any, anything about it. Um, I understand how to, I even understand how to get out of it. Uh, and I secret? understand it. How do you it's do it? It's daily habits. It's got to be daily habits. It's this. It's getting up early and forcing myself to go for a walk. It's hitting the yoga mat when I get out of bed. I've been doing all those things. Like I said, I've just been, we talked about it last week, sort of standing there going, ah, oh, <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, oh, right. I'm going for my walk. You know, everything take, is at like half speed, but also it is a weird time. We all have to forgive ourselves if we're going at half speed. I know that. I'm trying to be gentle and go, this will pass. I feel myself coming out of it little bits at a time, but I thought I was going to be better. Like, I really thought that's it this Monday. I'm going to be all about the schedule. And uh, that's not how it felt. Um, on the the job front, uh, I've also noticed there there have been people in my circle getting laid off. Some of them from pretty uh, large, prestigious companies. You you wouldn't think. Actually, story time. I had a prospective tenant trying to rent my house, and this guy and his wife. They both worked for a large hotel chain. You would have heard of. Everyone's heard of. Um, and this was before this coronavirus thing. Even you know before anyone was talking about being on lockdown. Um, and he was, he was telling me that, uh, you know, since it is such a big, well-known company, uh, his job is very secure. And since then, you know, no one's staying in hotels, occupancies are way down and everyone's getting laid off and furloughed. I saw a, a headline last week that Marriott's furloughed several, several, you know, tens of thousands of employees. Uh, and then everyone goes on to get laid off. So wow. this, this story of people losing their jobs, it's growing and growing and, probably the most ironic thing I've read all year is uh, some person from the Colorado uh, labor board or whatever. Uh, they said there there are jobs out there. Uh, you just got to look for them. For instance, in order to deal with the recent influx of jobless claims, we are hiring 300 people at the unemployment office. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. It, it's a, a mess snake out there. eating its own tail right there. That's the thing. It's a mess out there. And I actually know that the best thing to do is kind of chill out and really don't go out to Costco. That doesn't make sense. I am not a person who should get sick. I should. I mean, the truth is we should be as much as possible hunkering down. And it kind of enrages me still. <sighs> Stuff like, you know, they open the grocery store for seniors between seven and eight or whatever. My mom is telling me about this. And then there's 150 seniors there, like mobbing it and being close to each other. And my mother even is telling me, well, you know, I only had one piece of broccoli left. And I'm going, oh my God, you have enough calories in your house. <laughs> That's really what this is meant to be. And uh, uh, whatever. Well, yeah, it's hard times and I'm freaking out, but everybody's freaking out. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Don't listen to like yesterday's episode of The Daily or whatever two days ago because it will make you think, why am I even worried about any of it? That's the point. Then I get to the point of just like apocalyptic thinking. What's the um, gist of The Daily? Is it is it everything's doomed so it's not worth worrying about or is it? It's everything's doomed. It's everything's going to be so much worse than you think. You can't imagine. I mean, now, yesterday, on all of these, you know, it's like wherever I get my news, you can't avoid it. Everybody And everybody's saying this. Just wave wave two in the Asian countries. Um, all of it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't quite know what to do even for distraction, you know? Now, I did see that Stuff You Should Know put up a wonderful, they released last week a bunch of podcasts called Distraction Playlist. Oh, Yeah. Yes, it was wonderful. And I just listened to this morning on my walk, The History of Soda Pop. Fantastic. Okay. For me right now, that's about the level. Uh, I was recommended last night. Do you know about it? The show about the tiger guy on Amazon? Mm -mm. The seven part documentary? Okay. I got to I gotta look that up because that seems worth it to me. Um, I don't, you got any go-tos for like distraction? You got somebody you like you're living with, you know, that's the other thing here. I, I don't. I, oh, my God. I do have sometimes backyard beers with Rafiki kind of across the fence. Oh, yeah, that seems nice. It's great. You got anything, though, distraction wise? Uh, Kind of. So I, I've um, I've picked up one of my old personal projects. I'm working on a website uh, that may see the light of day before the end of coronavirus, which could be <laughs> could be two years from now. Who knows? Um, 
but what I what I turn to is my my comforting things, my familiar things, and I've restarted watching Mash from the beginning. Um, and I think I think I've watched Mash from the beginning since we started this podcast. So I'm I'm returning to that uh, in in less than less than a year. Yikes! What's the yeah? Yikes! What's the website? Uh, so my my company. Uh, I'm a data scientist and a web developer, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make available some of the tools I use on a daily basis for people to uh, play around with on the internet, or you know, pay money for it if they want to use, use them in uh, in their businesses and their jobs. Ooh, I had a thought recently that I thought you could help me. F- what the heck was it? There was some project like that where it was like Andrew could help me with this. What the heck was it? I wanted to scrub something or you know, scrape get something. something. Yeah. Um, yeah, do something fine. I can't exactly remember what it was. It was for my personal outreach, like beyond mama bear stuff. And I thought Andrew is the guy to talk to about this. Oh, cool. That sounds fun. Okay. Back to this Netflix. Here's the, here's the, here's the headline of the review on slate. Netflix tiger King is the only show crazier than the world outside right now. The new documentary series series is addictive Ethically questionable and spectacular. Can't wait. That's, I'm all about it. That's going to be my new thing. My stomach is grumbling. Can you hear that on the microphone? I cannot hear it. Okay, good. I can't. Uh, I hope we can't, but I forgot to eat. I did my walk. I drank some coffee. I have my drinks and my tissues ready here just because of, you know, sinuses. And um, I forgot to eat. That's par for the course. I've uh, I've actually stopped drinking coffee because it's been it's been messing with my stomach and I'm a person who considers myself to have a very strong stomach you know I'll eat anything and everything few things can can set me off but recently coffee's yeah. been doing it so now I'm on the oh, tea train gosh. and we've got a, a, a oh I've been cab- some nice tea a cabinet full of like twelve different kinds of teas oh that's that was always I remember that age in my life when I felt like I could do that probably about your age because. Hitherto, I had been, I felt very poor and mm-hmm. I would go to my parents' house and they would have like eight kinds of teas and I would be like, wow, you guys are rich. The opulence. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't have 12 kinds of teas, but I have a couple and I've been drinking tea lately just because it's yummy. Yeah. I've, Coffee's been bugging your stomach. That's a bummer, old man. You getting ulcers? I don't know what's going on. I It, it may have been uh, one particular bag of coffee. Uh, oh. I, I haven't worked through it and I'm not gonna, I, I probably need to throw it out, but I don't want to, I don't want to go and buy a whole nother bag of coffee only to figure out that it really does bother my stomach and have to throw that one out too. So yeah, huh? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I, um, coffee bothering your stomach is a sign of ulcers, but whatever. Why wouldn't you have an ulcer? These are trying times. These are anxious times. They just are. I'm going to watch Tiger King. I can't wait. Here's the thing. The things that I like thinking about and writing jokes about just because it's like a an exercise in my head, you can't do it here in the podcast because you don't like it. I don't uh, like what? I like, I like talking about jokes. My jokes. You don't like these ones. You don't want to talk about it. It's oh, but you will be interested in this. It really is. I've been um, playing around with the idea of love languages, Andrew. So that's really we started talking about that here in your, a in year ago, back when you were first watching. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to hear anything more about it, but it's real fun. But it can't do it. Can't talk to you about it. My whatever. Anyway, so I've spent some time on the phone. I spent some nice time on the phone with my mom the other day. We had actually a wonderful talk. Uh, she and I surviving the apocalypse, both of us lonely, uh, realizing like why people say that to both of us, you're going to get a dog. We're like, no, we're not going to get a dog. But here at the end of the world, when you can't go anywhere, it's like, oh, a... did you hear that stomach rumbling? I really should have eaten. Um, <laughs> a dog would be a reason to get up. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, question. Have you, have you been keeping in contact with your sons? Do you have like a family group chat going? No, we don't have that so much. I have been keeping in touch with my sons just because I talk to them. My son, Augie, is in shelter in place in France, of course. And George is here. George's life and his dad's life aren't that different. They're still going to work every day. They're both in essential necessity fields. Mm-hmm. Sure, essential services. So their lives don't actually look that that different. They still have the same amount of social contact. And um, yeah. Isn't that weird? So yeah, not weird. Like, really, not very affected at all. 
it's um it's it's very interesting to see how this affects so many people differently, right? Because totally for, right for for some people totally they've right. lost everything. For other people, uh, at least in the in the first part of my coronavirus experience, most of my life was exactly the same. Um, mm-hmm. n- now we're starting to see some some changes, but it's it's very weird. And I'm I'm watching these uh, like restaurants, especially down near the University of Denver. Um, not only do they not have students there, which they count on this time of year, yeah. uh, but they don't have any foot traffic because nobody's allowed to go out. So they they've all started hustling, trying to promote their um, their their takeaway business. Takeaway, it's all takeaway. I know, and you see people out there hustling for that and just desperate. Just and the truth is, I mean, we talked about it a week ago. It became very obvious about right then, if not before, and then certainly even in the past, like. When the city was going on lockdown and we were getting, you know, everything was shutting down. And then, of course, there was that comical moment of everything, including liquor stores. And so then there was just a mass gathering at liquor stores and whatever. Then they 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 walked that back. You know, restaurateurs saying maybe we'll have a blood drive here. But partly it's just to keep the doors open. And then comics doing innovative things like drive-in comedy show. There was a drive-in comedy show. You come with your car. Where you was know, that? There was a, up in Boulder. How there was you, one somewhere where they had, I don't know. Then there was another one you come and they broadcast it on the radio. I don't, I don't know. How, I don't know. I've seen churches doing it too, like drive-in. I don't know how the technology works, but huh. it's like even that, no, we're, we're really not supposed to be gathering. So <laughs> we got to chill out and stay still, you know? Yeah, it it is kind of interesting. Uh, we're we're being pretty good about our uh, sequestering, sequestration. I don't know. We're we're stuck in the apartment, and we're we're being pretty good about it. I did go to a store the other day because a part on my computer broke, and they actually so they they had very strict rules. Um, there are only fifty customers allowed in the store at a time, and it's one in one out sort of thing. Except uh, when you when you get in. They give you a briefing, you know, here, here's how it's going to work. You're not allowed to come within four feet of an employee. Uh, don't touch the things unless you're going to buy them. Uh, it, it was very weird. And then throughout the store, they had put tape on the ground six feet apart. Uh, so, you know, you're not supposed to be in the same tape box as anyone else. It was very, um, it was wow. surreal, but it was also a, like, a, I mean, it's a computer store. It's Micro Center. It's like a nerd's response to, uh, you know, they want to impose order and rules uh, and, and, and be very precise about it. Yeah, I love that. That's funny. The thing is that, that at, so at that store, they're doing that a few days ago. Uh, the stores I went to, because I did go to King Supers twice, I think, and the little Ethiopian market once in the past week near my neighborhood, in near my house. Uh you know, nobody's doing that at all. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, some people are take uh, whatever. I mean, I just. Uh, we we also have a, um, there's a, a group of motorcycle owners in our apartment. And I don't think it's an official group with a name or anything. But yesterday we went out for a walk and they were all, um, it looked like one of them was giving the others like bike lessons in the parking lot. Uh, you know, but they're all, they're all hanging out, palling it up. And it makes me, it makes me kind of angry. Because it's like, hey, I'm over here doing my part. Why why are you guys congregating? That's what I mean. And like this stuff about, right, we're going to open the grocery store at the special time for the people who are most vulnerable to come. And then they mob it. Uh, I mean, right. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, we were talking about like listening to podcasts that kind of know what they're talking about. It just gets depressing because they're going, we missed it. We're not flattening the curve. Dude, I, why am I? Andrew, go listen to those podcasts. Why are we talking about it? It doesn't help. You know what? We don't have enough. I do not have enough social contact right now. I need to spend my time with my friends, even virtually, not talking about the apocalypse. So what the (laughs) heck else can we talk about? You know what I mean? And that's what I was getting at. I did talk to a couple of comedy friends last night. They don't mind it if I run my jokes. They don't mind it if we talk through what's funny, but they also talked about, like, I said, well, you guys, some people are having like meetings online, you know, like joke writing sessions. And these guys are kind of skeptical. And I said, why not? They were like, what's the point? I said, I have had absolutely productive sessions with the two of you people, you know, whatever. And they're like, "Eh." I think the, the, the feeling is more like, 
yeah, no, it's helpful to sit together and write our jokes, but it only helps if then I'm going to go work it out that night. If I'm going to go mic, if I'm sure. going to go Wait, do what's a What's the point of having I, all this excellent material if I can't get it in yep. front of people? A little bit, a little bit. And again, <laughs> people are making cool videos. There are so many people out there doing productive things. It's going to change. The creative people will bring us out of this. I just haven't been one of them yet. I have been a creative person stuck with yard work and that's okay. I mean, I think it's okay, but I, I even that kind of just mindlessly in a fog, carry rock. It's probably the best thing to be doing really is digging a bunch of rock in my backyard in the sunshine. uh, It's good for the soul. It's good for the soul and the body. So that's all right. That's okay. Mm -hmm. What should we talk about? I don't know. I got to tell you, the uh, in my life, the apocalypse is almost all I can think about. It, between that and work, <laughs> I, I suppose I use I use my my side project as a way of avoiding thinking about the apocalypse. That's my moving Saying. rock. Yeah, yeah. But there's not a lot going on on the wedding front. Um, yeah. Two big developments this week: the uh, dress store. Uh, canceled Delaney's appointment for her alterations okay. and she moved it um, to a date that's still before our wedding. So that, that looks like it may, it may still be okay. Um, and then we, we also had a deadline. We had to pay half of our catering bill. Ah, so, so we had, to, we had to pony up some, some cash for that. Um, and we're still operating as if, uh, everything is normal and on schedule. Interesting, huh? Where are we? In March, April. I yeah, so we got we got uh, April, May, June. It's at the end of June, so we've yep. got we've got about three months. Yep, yep. All but right. It's, well, it's so we'll hard see. to say, right? That's <laughs> it's, so it's very hard. It's very to difficult say. to envision this this lasting for an entire quarter uh three months but that's you know, what people are predicting they're predicting longer than that oh well, there's people saying forget it you guys we're talking 18 months but i, I don't know <laughs> i know I, I okay may i recommend once again tiger king tiger king on amazon have you started nope, watching netflix, this Netflix? excuse me no no haven't started watched the clip made me laugh Seems ridiculous, and I'm all about it. And I'm seeing memes about it enough that it's a thing. This review on Slate is from March 25th, which is yesterday. yesterday. So uh, that seems fun. That seems perfect. Ethically questionable, addictive, and spectacular. It's a real character who's messed up, but he's got a bunch of pet tigers. And it just tch, seems like something will make you laugh, and it's horrifying, but great. Are you right. getting sick of uh, watching videos online? I, I guess you said you haven't been doing a lot of that yet. You've been moving rock. You've been listening to podcasts. Uh, but I have I've been, been spending so little time with my computer, and I am not a video watcher online like you are. I, I've just, uh, I've been doing so much of it. I'm sick of it. I'm, you know, I got to get away from these screens. Uh, I, I need a backyard to move some rock in. I should think so. I can't imagine. Um yeah. I can't imagine look. I have but I have not enjoyed spending time with my computer lately partly because of the double E's that always freaking types. I'm not double kidding. Double E double R. I got a report from listener <laughs> yeah. Jamie who says that uh his his MacBook Pro that he's loved for multiple years also has the same same crummy keyboard uh as your laptop and my old laptop. Uh now he's got spacebar troubles. So uh listener Jamie our thoughts and prayers are out with you. Uh, yeah, I feel you. Especially I'm sorry, in these man. Troubling I carry times. my little Yeah, I carry my little Bluetooth. What what I like sometimes is how I have that Bluetooth keyboard and sometimes I will like leave it in my pile of you know papers and cuz then it's going to come out with me when I sit down to deal with my pile of papers cuz it's part of my kit. Sure. And sometimes anyway, sometimes I'll bump it and then I'll like my computer in the next room <laughs> is freaking out. Space barring, you know, it's funny. I have um, to, so I've got the same keyboard you do, and I have yeah. to sh- turn the power off on the keyboard every time I'm away from my desk because Whiskers loves to sit oh, on it. Yep. Okay. Right. He loves yep, to sit on it. He loves to type Similar on it. Similar to that. Mm-hmm. Well, sure. He's typing. He's trying to get, he's trying to type a help me note escape. He's trying to reach the internet. It's really probably, he's probably working real hard on reaching. Uh, to something out there. He's probably been working on it for a long time and you've been 
stopping him every step of the way. How's his health? His health is fine. Uh, I think he enjoys having he figured it out. Delaney home. Um, he's sure. doing well. He's been. He actually last week or the first part of this week, I guess, since we talked, he's been scratching his neck with his back paw. Um, normally his issue is licking. Now it's scratching, and he scratched a uh, he scratched a gash in the side of his neck that's been no. healing. No. Yes, he's just a he's a masochist. He likes to that hurt himself. That cat goes so hard. He really does. He's you know what? I think he's I think he's like seven or nine or some some number of years old. He might be a teenager in cat years. He might he might be a little emo. Uh, yeah, like it's going on for cat. a long time too. He might be a cutter cat. Oh, gross. He also has no threshold for pain. Like that's a thing you might look into. Wait, how did how was it that we solved? What was it that? How does it get solved? Delaney's it's frowning spots. at me. She she gets really sad when I talk about whiskers. It she makes does. it makes her feel like a bad pet mom. But there's nothing you can she's do. She's not a bad pet mom at all. She's done everything. But there's nothing you can do with this cat. Nothing. What was it that you fixed though? You fixed it. How was it again? Food? Uh we just started giving him allergy pills. Oh, we, yeah, allergy. We, we still have no idea what he's allergic to. Apparently everything. He, mm, now he's scratching. Oh god. And now he's scratching. Oh. But he's not licking, which is which he's is He's scratching gashes. He's cutting, like you said. God, it, it you're right. He's a teenager. It's ramped up. Now we're in the cutting phase. Well, Andrew, that's when a normal therapist would tell you get some help. For that kid, like that for real, that's some serious help. By the way, that's another concern, right? And it's heavy and it's not funny at all. It weighs on my, I worry about people. I worry about people in these times. Social isolation is not great no, for it's not. people. I have a friend, David, who wrote a joke. He told me about it last night on Messenger. He, it's terrible. He wrote a joke about how this has got to be the, the worst people suffering the worst are the mass shooters because they just don't have any place to go. <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> Funny joke, a solid David Moss coming in hot. Oh, hey, yo, I tell ya. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, pets are funny. That seems to be making a lot of people happy. Everyone loves their their pets. Have you? Uh, you're on Instagram, so you got uh, see a pup, send a pup going on. Nope, I don't know what that is. Oh my goodness! This is all over my Instagram. All these it dog is? people. Yes, is you know they huh. uh, they they send a picture of their dog. They tag ten people, and then those ten people are expected to share a picture of their dog. So oh. my entire Instagram stories, it's uh, it's like an hour long every morning of people's dogs. And oh, that, on the stories. Yeah, and then that morphed into from see a pup, send a pup. It was uh, C ten, do ten, and that was push ups. You gotta you gotta film yourself doing ten push ups, and then tag ten people. Whatever, and then now huh. people are people are uh, you know it's become it's become its own genre. Now it's see a sip, send a sip, and you cheers you cheers the camera, and then you take a sip of your drink. Uh huh. How that's on the stories? Okay, I gotta admit the stories on both Instagram and Facebook kind of I just don't get it. I can't figure it out. They mostly suck. There's there's one guy that I really like who does it well, and his name is Gregor Holenda, and he's a photographer. Uh, also like metal worker and he builds, he builds motorcycles in his garage. And I think since he's a photographer, he's got a like good eye for um, telling stories with images and that sort of thing. And he's, he's giving many machining lessons, you know, how to make a uh, brake rotor and stuff from scratch in your, in your home machine shop uh, in these, I don't know how long the story is 10 seconds in these 10 second bites. He's super good at it. And I really enjoy those. Uh, but all of the all of the my friend kind of stuff, sending pictures of their dogs, I'm over it. Don't need it. I don't see any of that do a pup thing, a pup sip up thing. What is it? Do a, a pup. see a thing, do a thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See a pup, send a pup. See a thing, do a thing. And then sips and everything else you said. I am kind of delighted that I'm not hep to that right now. It seems I'm, annoying. I'm surprised I know about a trend right now that you don't know about. Yeah, you mentioned that in your open. I don't. Come on, who, like, I'm so freaking hip. I'm really not. How how could you avoid TikTok? I mean, that's, that's the really more stunning thing. Um, okay, so stories, I do have to admit, they, I don't really get it. I don't get how to interact. Some of the people in my life actually do a very good job with stories. You know, they're good at visual content. They're good at funny content. 
very funny. Uh, but I, I can't really keep up. I half the time never know. Like, is the sound on? Uh, last night we were, <laughs> last night, like I said, we had a few, we had two other people here plus me and food. And then we FaceTimed some of our comic friends who aren't in the state right now. And when we were first doing it, like, it was funny. We were doing it on my phone. It was going, the sound was going through my speaker or my computer, all of this. Da, da, da. And then finally, as we're figuring it out, like, oh shit, press that button. The guy on the other end goes, okay, boomer. You know, like really, that was amazing. But one of them was 26 years old. We were just messing with it. So that's how I feel about the stories. I never really know how to interact with them, how to use them, but I see them a lot and I appreciate them. I appreciate the art of Facebook stories. A lot of times the guys will tag me and stuff and it's pretty sweet and funny. And sometimes I look real, like I'm doing like boomerang style. Like it'll be a picture of me telling jokes, but it's, you know, just goofy and funny and half a second long. It's cute. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the janky immediacy of it. Like the, like actually the graphic component of stories is often ugly, but funny to me. What do you mean? There you have it. That's what I have to say. Oh, there's just a lot of, um, you know what I mean? I've tried it a couple. The, it's very like the interface. Uh, uh the pick the the visual look of it. Like people who use it like that. Like the interface itself. If I go on there and do a story, I have all these options to put text and tag people in a very banners. It's a lot of bannery way, and and it's got you kind of have too much. You can you can just layer it and you can put it at angles. You know what I mean? You can mix fonts. It can be very aggressive. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of like when in the early two thousands, late nineties, when, uh, when suddenly everyone discovered clip art, uh, it, it feels very much like that. Yep. Yep. And it's ugly and it's overdone versus when, or when people started building their own websites and then versus things now like Squarespace, please sponsor, um, where it, they, they give you such, such intense templates and they're so high level, but along the way in the interim period, like when I was using, I don't know, WordPress, I suppose I learned respect the template, you know, pick a template you like, and don't, they, they do it for a reason. And Squarespace makes it pretty hard for you to use more than let's say three fonts on your website. You know what I mean? For good Freaking reasons because websites were getting real ugly. Mine is, that's another thing I could 100% be sitting here doing. My mama bear website is just busy and ugly and it could really use some just paring down and cleaning. I don't want to spend time with my computer right now. I, I, I guess that the whole thing, like if I sit down and look at my mama bear website, that reminds me of all of the gigs that I have canceled in the next couple of months, which reminds me of how it's the apocalypse, which reminds me of how, you know, and it's not, yeah, it's it's really too bad. It's a death spiral. And it's really too bad because the truth is, you know what? And I did just post one little thing yesterday, but here's the truth. Hey, parents of teenagers, home alone with your kids. Right. They're feeling it now. Uh-huh. Hey, do you want to tune out? Plug in my audio book. Put my voice in your you ears. You know what I mean? When you were making those like... Uh... 30 second YouTube videos. Yes. Uh, yes. And it's like, Hey, I just snuck away. Here's, here's a hot tip for dealing with your kids. Right. That, that's probably right. what people, people are craving right uh, now. That kind 100%. of content. What people are craving and it needs to be 30 seconds long and it needs to be funny and snarky. But the thing is, I also look at it and I go, yep, everybody's doing it. I, it feels so busy and so noisy that I just feel like, and that's, <sighs> I have, I don't know. I have some audience. I mean, there is a place for it. I just, all I'm telling you, I haven't been well. I have not, I'm not proud of it. I have, I have not been responding with the normal amount of creative pluck and hope as I usually think I do to things because we've never had a thing like this. I see other people doing it and I'm kind of, pissed off that it's not me. So we were talking about how do you get back to it, right? Mm -hmm. Daily habits, you said. I know that it's daily habits. I know that it is. Uh, uh, you just said C10, do 10, pass 10 ahead, pass it on. <laughs> Uno. Uh, it's probably more like that kind of a thing. Uh, but I've kid, I don't know. I don't know. I'll get there. I'm getting there. I'll get there. I am bummed out. I'm bummed out by my response. I'm bummed out that I am not more able to pick myself up by the damn bootstraps and just feel happier. I am, it is interesting to me to kind of watch what fear and dread do to the brain. 
I'm a... I'm afraid to sit still now for way different reasons than I was two weeks ago. I am afraid of bedtime not exactly in a different way than before. And I, and I just, there is an overwhelming kind of fear is Delaney talking. She is, she is, but you said you're afraid of bedtime and I've been feeling the same thing, which is, yeah. I, I don't feel like I've earned it. Right. And, and I'm, I'm not excited to go to bed. Uh, because I know that tomorrow is more of the same. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, isn't that interesting? And, and you guys are doing pretty well. Like you're, you've still got work and you've got each other and you're not alone and you have a pet to laugh at. And that's interesting to me that you still feel the, you know, I mean, really, cause my mom and I were talking about it and she, she was being very funny and same with me. Like she was feeling this way because my dad died and then she was starting to come out of it and having some plans and feeling more social and seeing some path to a purpose. And I was just going, I would like schedule again. You know what? I would, I am looking forward to it. Boy. Yeah. Go to a job every day. That's going to be some schedule that I am now looking forward to. Oh, oh, opposite, you know? And it is funny. Like we were saying, some people are like half my friends are going in this abyss and half my friends are over busy, too busy, have more work than they can stand. And even, and that's scary work. And then the other half, if I have three halves, <laughs> the third half, I have, uh-huh, they're doing, like I said, they're going out and doing work at Costco. And I'm really seriously considering that because I go, it would be a schedule that what, what else am I going to do? And at least it would be guaranteed income. And then I go, that would be part of the problem. I mean, if I don't need to, don't go out and be in the public and get sick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, today, like I said, I have a plan, Andrew. I have been, this was going to be the week where I got back to my schedule. Mixed results, not terrible. Little bit better than last week. I've had some fun. I've had some laughs. I don't feel as dark as in, I don't feel in as dark a place, but we'll see. Something I've noticed that's kind of interesting is for just a, a very brief moment, for a couple of days in the last week, it felt very um, like kumbaya. We're all in this together. Uh, mm -hmm. And it it doesn't feel that. It, it, I, I would see things and, and hear things and read things. And it reminded me of like buy war bonds posters or, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, it is a very patriotic thing. This um, we're, we're all fighting this disease together. Uh, sure. And I don't know if that stuff is not out there anymore or if I'm just not seeing it. Maybe I'm blind to it at this point because it, I don't know, I feel something differently on the inside. Um, but it, it doesn't feel as much like a um, a cause that we're, we're all behind, you know? I mean, I don't know. I think it's a mix. I think it's both. I see, I still, I'm still seeing a lot of people make little jokey songs, but they're sweet about like, love is what we need right now. Uh, you know, D D D. Um, but then I see people mobbing the grocery store and hoarding and I go, I hate you all. So I don't know. I can't tell. And the truth is you and I don't really know what it's like out there because we're not out there. Right. I think I have been hearing a lot of things like, um, you know, there, there, people are being kind and people are saying, hey, here, let me help you with your grocery cart or your medicine or I don't know. The other day I was on a walk after the snow, so it must have been Friday. And so we still had the snow we had had the day before, but it melted really fast and it was another beautiful day and I was out walking. And a woman who's 84 years old who lives down the street from me asked me if I would scrape her car for her. And I said, I absolutely was going to offer, but I didn't want to offend you. And she's like, why the hell would you offend me? <laughs> I'm 84 years old. And the, <laughs> and the truth is I couldn't really tell if she was 84. You know, I, she didn't seem like it. That's the true story. Um, and then we stood there and talked and she said, she said that she wanted to write the governor or the mayor or somebody. She was going to write a, a letter saying people are being so nice. There is a lot of this out there that people are really being kind. When I saw people in my walk this morning, I mean, I saw both. And there weren't a ton of people out, but it was fairly early. I mean, there was a sort of raise your hand and say good morning, as I said. And there were people who even from a distance said, love it, when they saw what I was doing with the chalk. And then there are people who like sort of turn your back, turn their back when you're walking down the path and resolutely stand with their back turned. And everybody has headphones in, so it's always a weird thing on the path. But resolutely like I'm not even, I don't know. That's kind of normal. 
people have different responses on a on a path all the time. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I have noticed my my walk is much more crowded now. It's uh, there are a lot more people on the path than there ever ever have been. Usually, I find that this morning wasn't so much the case. It, they, although, you know what? Today, yes, of course, this morning at a time when I wouldn't see this on a weekday, there was a daddy out there with his two little boys on bikes, you know, and he was giving them directions and stuff. So, yeah, keeping them out. Yeah, this is the time when people need. Oh, I don't know. The other thing that I realized, like, as I'm falling asleep last night, Andrew, I was worried about like a fire. Why? And I just Why realized I am. I'm saying because of apocalyptic brain because that's where we have like because I live alone because because I recently the I got a message through my security system that the smoke alarm what's it called fire what's it called smoke alarm that the the cover was loose and so it wasn't functioning properly and I took care of it so now I think I'm fine just because of no reason because I I don't normally operate like that you know I have the crack brain and I worry about a lot of stuff but I think I have never been I don't worry about stuff like that to a to a fault sometimes, like that would bother my ex-husband, you know, like, why don't you worry about the stock market crashing or whether you locked your car or if we could have a fire, you know, like if that loose wire could cause a fire. Uh, I mean, I don't think I walk around with that kind of anxiety. I walked around with other kinds of anxiety. I don't know. I just realized like that was a thing and I went, oh, for God's sake. If I have to lie here now in bed at night and worry about fires, <laughs> I understand that there are people in the world who do have to do that. I don't want to be one of them. I golly. And I got rid of it. I, I told my brain to please let that go and it worked okay. But um, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, it, it's like I am global worried on a level that I'm not used to and the level of distraction I need. Now you're saying mash. Yeah. I mean, I have my shows like that. Parks and Rec is okay to put on in the background, but it's not, it's not enough right now. Uh, flirting with guys on dating apps is pretty good. How's that going? Have, have, has stupid. there been a noticeable change? Last last week you told us yeah. that people, uh, you know, uh, you were opting for a phone call instead of a in-person date. And that was a turnoff to many. They would not, uh, they would not engage in a phone call. Uh, are you still experimenting? Are you still, are you still sciencing on this subject? It's mostly just kind of the understanding that I guess we can't really see each other for right now. I kind of can't believe that match doesn't have, or hinge or whomever doesn't have a giant banner on the front of the site going, y'all singles don't touch each other because there's still a question to tell you the truth with people going, well, I've been sequestered all week. How about you? Yeah. You know, there's still that question, but for the most part, it's just like flirting with guys on the, which is dumb because it does feel like, well, yeah, we're not going to meet you. I don't know, but at least that's distracting. Do you, the, the tr true story, sure, right? That's to think about. distracting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, you don't want to talk about that with me because mostly what it does is feed my jokes. <laughs> Eventually, it doesn't feel that funny right now. It doesn't feel that funny, but it is. I am in the dating world. I am in the world of being single. It is data collection and it is actually instructional. And often it does feed my jokes, not in the way. That people think it's not like oh I'm gonna make you a subject of my jokes exactly it's just it's fueling it like it's not, seriously it's not as that I way think about exactly language, just just not that way exactly. kind of kind of round about that well round about if you do something like deplorable uh, for sure that's gonna you know become part of my shtick because I don't get it uh, oh I think maybe we talked about this last week I did notice one thing so I haven't been telling guys right away that I'm a comic experimenting with that, which as I've said, like, because they, they would start being funny at you and you it. hate yeah, that. You don't, that. you don't want a competition or you do want a competition, but take it to the mic was the quote. Take it to the mic. That they're still doing it. That's the thing. And it's just like, I'm telling you now I've started to say things like, I promise you I'm not here for the jokes. And then that just sends you down the wrong path anyway. So whatever, flirting with guys on those things, talking to Rafiki, doing yard work, drinking beer with Rafiki is pretty fun. Except that again, all, all roads lead to the apocalypse now. You know what I mean? <laughs> My son George turns 21. Oh, probably by the time this comes out tomorrow. And he's bummed because he, I mean, look how that, he can't go out. What a bummer to turn 21 in the age of the, apocalypse that is a bummer that is a bummer right? how's he gonna celebrate he and uh 
he and Tal are gonna they're gonna have their own little celebration. Yeah. We honestly have to. You know, I mean, that's a question to last week. It was like, we'll still have friends over. Will we? I'm probably not. I'll go over there. It's my baby. Um, He's been here helping me in and out. But. But but then again, going there completely disrupts the whole idea of me and all of us being on quarantine because they have not been on quarantine, but I have just I've been socially isolating. Right. That and exposes they have you been, to all those people they've all interacted them, with throughout the week. Which then the next time I go to Safeway, because I have to, yeah, okay, again, what else? Tiger, may I recommend the Tiger Show? I feel, Uh, I'm a little anxious (laughs) about you recommending this, having not seen it. Oh, on Netflix. I'm just telling you, I'm going to, it's going to be, I also feel I have nothing else to recommend. Except Sidewalk Chalk is fun. Sidewalk Chalk is fun. This is the exact opposite of the Roomba 765, which we can wholeheartedly, unreservedly recommend. That's a good point. I actually... I uh, can't. I, I've been getting a lot of joy cleaning out the Roomba's rollers. Roomba roller joy. Really? Yes. The rollers, you say? The roller. Have you taken your Roomba apart yet? No. Do I need to take it completely apart? No. I mean, it's, it's built in a way that it's uh, easy to service. You don't... You don't need any tools. Actually, I, you might need it a Phillips tells screwdriver. You when you need it. Yeah, well, it also I will. tells you when you need to clean it, and I don't. Let's see. I guess I did once it told me to. If it gets bound up, then it'll give you a message. That's correct. You uh, have more hair in your house, so yours. I don't really have to clean mine too much. I guess. I guess not. I mean, you have long hair person in your house. You have cat hair person in your house. I don't. I just got me with tiny short hair. Just me and hair not long enough to bind up a roller. Mm. Once in a while, I find a long, dark hair and it freaks me out. But I realize it's just my friend Jeff's on it because he has long hair like a girl. I mean, not that it's gendered. Nobody cares. But I mean, he has the longest hair of the, of people who come over here usually. Oh, Lorette. And I've found Lorette hair every once in a while. But recently I was like, what the hell is this long hair? No one has. Oh, right. That seems like um, a lot of work maintaining maintaining long hair. And it's something we're all going to have to do now, either that or learn how to cut our own hair like Mrs. Philholm, because uh, the the salons have been shut down for they they were they were shut down in the first wave of shutdowns. I mean, just as I have discussed uh, my manicure, just as I had just as I had decided this is what I need to do is actually once a week go in and just have this ish like have my hooves cut back my manicure. I'm talking and then I can (laughs) then my hands can maybe look picked. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can be socially acceptable. Well, fine, gone. Uh, never mind. There was I know. No, there's funny jokes out there too about waxing. What? Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, we, uh, roots. I do my own hair, so I'm not. It's gonna be the same. But right now, because wh- why not? I'm letting my roots scratch. So I'm kind of digging it. It kind of looks hard, rock and roll. But um, I'm like, eh, it's the apocalypse. Who cares? Just let let it grow. Sure. Uh, do you know the crazy thing is I, I could try out bald. And still have hair in time for my wedding. And no one no one would even I know because I don't leave the house. And you don't post crap on the social media. Oh, your picture's cute. The one that you said put for show art, really cute. So how were your engagement photos? That was fun, huh? Oh, yeah. I, for, I forgot that that happened since we last that spoke. That happened. Uh, our engagement photos were canceled. What? So, so Delaney and I, uh, we went and took the tripod to the park. And we took our own photos. Um, that was a really cute one. And I'm a little bit annoyed. Come on. I could have stayed six feet away and done that with you, Andrew. Lots of people offered. My dad offered. Um, I'm <laughs> sure Stephen would have offered. You've offered. Uh, but you For know, me, I'm saying you could have given me that gift is what I'm saying. Oh, oh, I see. I see. The well, I've got. That me out of my funk, wouldn't it? I haven't, um, I haven't finished editing all of the photos, but I have three that I really like. And I will send those to you after the show. Good. There, that one, the one that you used for show art was super cute. So good. I'm glad you got some good photos. You can add them to your wet, wedding website. Mm-hmm. Yes. Does ma'am. Delaney like to watch Mash with you? She does not. She and I have very different tastes in television. Television. I know. So what's she doing for a distraction? Because Delaney was very helpful to me last week when she told me that she also felt like in a fog and and caught herself staring in the middle of tasks. That has been immeasurably helpful to me. That even Delaney, who does not normally have like the crack brain feels that way it makes me feel better so can she what is she doing for distraction she really seems to like this is us which uh she's i I don't know how many seasons there are but i think it it almost feels like she's been watching that show uh since i met her 
Uh, and every time a new episode of that comes out, she gets a little, um, uh, I don't know, full of emotion. I guess it's it's one of those shows designed to make you uh, smile so hard you cry, or uh, it's just so sickeningly sweet that that you just I don't know. But that that's a very popular. I think there's one. also a lot of crying, like because of tragedy and probably sincerity. probably yeah. Uh, so yeah okay. Usually yeah. when she I'm watching, she, uh, uh... yeah, go ahead. Usually when I'm watching old stuff like Seinfeld and MASH uh, or YouTube videos about nuclear physics, uh, she's she's watching like a, this is a, she also gets into the uh, same shows that every girl our age watches, you know, like The Bachelor and uh, I don't know what whatever else is on TV. But that that's kind of her background. Um, is noise. she one of the what is the thing called? Uh, the Doctor Show. The Doctor Show. Grey's yep, Anatomy. Yep. Yeah, not, not that I've ever. I don't no. think she's watched Grey's Anatomy since I've been with her. But that show's been on since like I was in happening. middle school. That's an that's a very old show. It still goes on. It's they they're putting out new seasons. Yes. Good lord. Yeah. No, it's still happening. I know. I've never seen it. Not even one episode. Um, but that seems like a good one. I don't know shows like that with too much emotion. I understand that's the like bingey kind of thing that people would recommend. And so I'm glad to hear those recommendations for others. That is not going to be my jam, right? I'm not going to watch This Is Us. I don't want to watch anything too emotional, too much about relationships, too much about families. I kind of like goofy, trifling, you know, half hour sitcom kind of stuff just because the uh, level of commitment is very low. It doesn't take a whole lot to, to sit down for an episode. Um, and you don't, you don't get invested in it emotionally. Like you were just saying. Yep. In general, I don't even like to sit down and watch anything. The, the last week I did like lie in bed and on my laptop. Cause that's the only thing I have. I don't even have a monitor. So keep that in mind. Right. I don't have 24 hour news cycle, which is cool, but I watched a movie. Oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was dumb. And I don't, then I was like, God, I just wasted my life on that. <laughs> uh, and other people told me that's a good movie, Lisa, what's wrong with you? And I went, uh, so, okay. doesn't matter. Podcasts have still been my jam. I do love that stuff. You should know did the distraction playlist that was just adorable i mean it really was exactly right so that you could you know it was a stuff from their archives on just history of things and they are nice and friendly and they're friends with each other and their effect is great there's also stuff you missed in history class i'll listen to a little bit of that of that today probably um our regular podcast guys have been you know helpful but uh, everybody is also saying it like i don't want to talk too much about it but I can't not talk about it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> sure. I haven't listened to any knows. of that stuff because I haven't been oh, getting my, uh, when I go on a walk now, I go with Delaney. So I'm, I'm a oh, week right. and a you half have behind on podcasts. Yeah, funny. Funny. Even the most, even the least vocal, verbal among us. This cat said the other day, he goes, it's just hard because nobody knows. And I went, that's all, that's all, that's all. I mean, this guy said that and it was like, this is a guy who doesn't have many words, friend of mine. And I went, that's really all that, that's all she wrote. It's hard because nobody knows. But boy, everybody's got a hot take. Like ESPN, the, the, which is a channel on television for sports, Andrew. I've um, never heard of it. There's no sports ball going on in the world. So they're playing old random games. And then I saw, um, I was at a friends. And I did see, I mean, this was before it really, really after sports had shut down, obviously, but, uh, where the hell did I see that? Anyway, it was like, it was like talking heads discussing sort of predictively about what might happen with the Olympics. Yeah. I saw a conversation about postponing till 2021, Mm -hmm. which is kind of an interesting thing, you know, Mm -hmm. all those, all those people who, um, I know. Spent spend their entire life training, dreaming of this moment. Uh, now it's been put on hold indefinitely. Uh, you've got, I mean, in the Olympics, there are certain sports that it's very easy to age out of, right? If you're if you're a gymnast towards the end of your career, and someone postpones the Olympics a year, that might be enough to keep you out of the Olympics. Well, see, I know this because that's exactly the conversation that everyone is having. Sure, Anywhere I'm really good at having conversations at that anyone else could have. It's that's just <laughs> stunning. Do you, I mean, but that's all we have right now. You know, that's my point is like, oh my God, I know. Yep. That's the thing. And then take it to, wow, imagine what it would be like to be a senior in high school or college or 
everybody has a hot take. I, I did have another interesting call with a prospective tenant for my house. And this okay. guy has three kids. Um, two of them are in high school, one's in middle school, or excuse me, one's in college, one's in high school, one's in middle school. Um, and he's trying to make plans. He's looking for a house because this college child is home indefinitely uh, when they should be off at school, right? What, yeah. What, yeah. What a weird, what a weird freshman year of college to have. Right. I mean, Right. That happened. That's I saw my girlfriend. Um, that happened to me, to me last week. They came over before we were, when we were on six feet isolation, they came over to make clay tiles and I was surprised, but of course it makes sense. Her daughter's home from college and this mama first year, single mom, she's going, I was just getting used to it. I was just settling in. That was great. And now she's like, she's home. Oh, Sure. Oh, on and on and on and on. Think of all the, all of it, all of it. Yep. There you have it. Mm-hmm. Very strange times. Strange days indeed. That song keeps going through my head. John Lennon, uh, strange days you, indeed. You mentioned that um, some of your comic friends were trying to avoid moving back in with their parents, but I got to yeah. believe that with the, with the jobs and all that, there's going to be a massive wave. You know, if you thought millennials lived with their parents for a right? long time before, uh, and anyone yeah. who just moved out <laughs> may know. 30% now. of them who don't already have that as their plan are right back at home. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is going to affect, I mean, the, the repercussions and the, the, the stories we tell, they're going to last for generations, you know? I know. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely right. I mean, oh God, which is why, yeah, it's just, again, we don't know. We don't know what it looks like and everything changes every day. It is, we've talked about it before, only in ways that I didn't know were, would ever be this epic. Uh, ponder it in our hearts. It really feels like that thing. I think we were, I think I brought it up when my father was dying or what, just, I don't know how to make sense of it and I don't know how to deal with it and I don't know how to hold it. So the human brain wants to, and experience wants to make sense of things, wants to categorize. I love that at the computer store, they were, they mapped out a grid. This is what three, six feet is, motherfuckers, right? <laughs> that, that is six feet. So I, I mean, I love it because there is this human desire to make sense and to forecast, right? To predict, to look into the future, even though we know it's futile, but we, we have a lot of markers on our trail that make us think we know certain things. And we have a lot of, I don't know. And for the whole world or for so many of us to be thrown into place of going, whoa, I don't know much of anything. And to be frightened and to not know what to, uh, I, I, whatever it's, yep. Boy. And like I said, I am a person who actively for a long time has at least known I got to find the funny life is hard, but worth it. If we don't laugh, we'll cry. Even before I did comedy, that was my approach. It's interesting right now how I'm not sure. There's not very much funny to say about it. There is, there's funny. There's, I don't know. Of course there's funny Mrs. Philholm. Yeah. And I think no, that's not true. I was going to say, I think we found some of it today. We didn't find a whole lot of funny today. We kind of uh -uh. dropped the ball on the funny farm, on the funny front. Yeah, we dropped that. The funny yeah. front. I like that. That'd be the, the name of front. our Facebook group where our fans could find us, the funny front. The funny front. Yeah. Golly. Well, I mean, it's just like I'm thinking about, you know, there's, uh, we were talking about it last night, the other comics and I like, seriously, <laughs> very likely the idea that I can be a stand-up comedian as a career, not I personally, I've never dreamed of that. In fact, I was shocked that I was making any money doing comedy, right? And then I still have always wanted to parlay it into this other thing. But that that's gone. That like, that that structure is gone. That that construct is gone. It's just weird. And and then again, like, who the fuck cares? So what? So it'll look different. People find other ways to tell them each other jokes. They always have done. We're going to tell each other jokes. That will bubble. But it just, just to think about it like, well, but this thing that we kind of thought was 
like, especially for these younger kids, like they knew the stepping stones, right? They kind of knew and they're here in Denver as an interim and then they've got their sights on LA or New York or whatever and going, no, that's probably gone now. I mean, just for a lot. Yeah. Olympics, comics, <laughs> who knows? I, I, anyway, yeah, everything will be different. The human spirit triumphs. I believe it. We are going to have creative responses to this. And some of it, I, like I said, some of it I'm already seeing very funny YouTube videos will be even better, but right now I don't have, I don't have a hot take and I'm still kind of paralyzed. Funny. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> Wonder how they're doing. Wonder how all our half my age listeners are doing. Well, they should chime in. Some of in. them are hunkered down with their kids. They're all creative, brilliant people. So they're probably, they should chime in. They should tell us how they're surviving and give me ways out of it because they're smart. They sure are. They're smart and beautiful. I know. And creative and certainly funny. Oh, guess what? The leak is back in this studio. Shh, be quiet about it. Maybe the roof didn't hear me. It's just a tiny little leak. I don't know what to do about that. Didn't work. Our mitigation did not work. Hey, great news. Okay, well, it's the end of the world as we know it. Do you feel fine? I do at the moment. I got a belly full of dry Cheerios. That's good. I ate a little bit of ice cream last night, which I shouldn't do. It made me have sweats in this early in the morning. Oh, the ice That's cream about sweats? it. If I eat sugar. Huh. Yeah, sugar sweats. Mm-hmm. That's funny. I woke up kind of sweaty in my house and it wasn't hot and I didn't leave the heat on or anything. And I went, ooh, that would be the ice cream I had last night. Just a few bites of it. Just a few bites of sugar. I can't do it. Hmm. That's actually the, the, one of the major differences in my life is that I have night sweats. Sweats if I eat sugar. It's an old lady thing, Andrew. It's all real fun. I mean, that's really lovely. It's a fun thing to talk about. Something Still loving my bidet. To, I suppose. You love talking about that. My bidet. Uh, yeah, how's, how's the bidet? Great. I mean, I'm looking like a genius now. I got hands free, no toilet paper needed. The uh, end times, you know, you had a um, kind of a thought of what they might be like. And now that they're here, it turns out it's just uh, warm water being pulsed directly on your rear end. That's, yeah. That's what the end times were like. Everything. Yeah, that's what it's like. We're just sitting here with a hands-free experience. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my hands. You can, you do it. Well, you hold the remote with your hands. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I just miss telling the bidet jokes, you know? I'm kidding. Nobody needs to hear that. Uh... Music, music's good. Yeah, Miss Philholm, we don't even have to. We don't even have to reach for things that are good. We've already <laughs> been recording for an hour and ten minutes. Okay. I know. I'm just. I'm not reaching to fill time. I'm. I'm. I'm actually grasping at spiritual and psychological straws, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? Grasping at all straws. Um, hey, it was nice to talk to you, though. Thanks for all. As always, that's a touchstone in my week, and it's always good. It is. In this uh, time without routines, that is one routine that lasts. It's about it. It's all about all I got right now. So thanks for that, Mr. Bridges. It was nice talking to you. Thank Give you my love to your home. wife and your cat on the other side of the curtain. All right. Talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you.